Uh, I, I'm going to, just going to release what I feel like the Lord has been pressing upon the intercessors in this past two weeks. I would say we're going on three weeks and I feel like it's intensifying and there is a leading of the Holy Spirit that is taking us into an intercession for our prodigals, for our family members, for our children, for, I'm talking about cousins, I'm talking about everyone who is extended in your family line that has not received Jesus Christ as not only Lord and Savior, but as their Lord over their life. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, they received the um, salvation prayer, but it's another thing to say that they're following Jesus. And I am so part of the, are we following Jesus as to, as to well, did they receive the Lord's prayer? I have seen numerous of times people praying the Lord's prayer, but they've never followed Jesus. So I think that it is important to not only lead the person to the Lord, but also disciple them on how to follow. And these past few weeks, um, there has been a tremendous, just heaviness of travail in my spirit. I can't, I can't even shake it off sometimes. At times I'm pulling over, just crying out for whoever the Lord has placed in my heart at the time that I'm pulling over for. And I said, Lord, what is going on? And as, as great as the harvest is going to be, it's going to be even greater when we see our family members who have not received the Lord coming in through that harvest. And I got to tell you guys, I know that it is hard for us to be the one to bring them into Christ but it is not impossible to be the one that brings them to Christ. It is not impossible for God to use us to be the ones to bring our family to Christ. We don't have to always pray, God, send a laborer when you are a laborer that could be the one to bring your family members to Christ. And a lot of times I feel like we put that responsibility on someone else when the responsibility is ours to do on our own. And if, if, and we know that our family members can be stubborn, prideful, whatever the case is with whatever the individual issue is, we have to ask for wisdom and we have to ask for guidance and we have to have the Holy Spirit anointing us to have that opportunity of a door to drop a seed that the Lord will continue to water. And, I, and it just, and like today, um, we've got some stuff that is going on in our own family. And I have been standing in the gap, receiving dreams and just God just showing me things of, of where we're at in, in the city and in, in the region and the nation. And I just don't feel like I have to pour it out as much as I have to pray it out. I have to pray out what the Lord is revealing before I can pour it out. Because I have to have a very sharp understanding of where we're going and how are we going to address this as to this is what the Lord is showing me. I believe this is what it is. No, we need guidance. We need to know what we're targeting and we need direction. We need direction on what we are doing so we can make a, I don't even think it's a breakthrough anymore. I think it's a breakout. Once you break out of something, there's no way of having to come back into it because it's broken. And breakthrough sometimes reminds me of like just taking a curtain and slicing it through, but it still remains a curtain. It's just sliced. So I think that at this hour, we're not looking to slice the curtain, but to dismantle it so it's no longer a curtain. If that even makes sense, which I'm sure it does. Um, but I want to talk to you about Abraham because this is what it brought me to. Abraham in chapter, in Genesis 18, verse 16, Abraham intercedes for Sodom. I mean, we can look around. Are we not in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah? 
Are we not seeing these things happening in our nation? Are we not looking around and obviously seeing how wicked and profound and perverted it has become? And we can literally turn around and say, we are living in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you're like, we're like looking around expecting for fire to fall from the sky, but there's an intercessor. There's someone standing in the gap for Sodom and Gomorrah. There's someone who is petitioning God, begging God to spare his mercy, his justice upon our nation. And so in Abraham, Genesis 18, 16, it says, the men, the men got up from their meal looked out towards Sodom. And as they left, Abraham went with them to send them on their way. Then, the, then look what it says. Should I hide my plan from Abraham? The Lord asked, who was the Lord asking in this hour if he should hide his plans from you? For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families, the sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. And then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. We live in this covenant because of Abraham. We live in the very covenant, and it's not only because of that, it's because Jesus Christ came and died on the cross, so we live in that covenant now. But in this time, there was a covenant that was being made with Abraham. As a matter of fact, chapters before that, the covenant was already made, and there was promises that were made on Abraham that we get to inherit today. And one of the promises were our families, our sons and daughters, our families, our extended families, our DNA, our descendants, are to inherit this promise. It says, so the Lord told Abraham, I have, I have heard a great outcry coming from Sodom and Gomorrah. He has heard the cry coming from Sodom and Gomorrah. He has heard the cry coming from Sodom and Gomorrah. Some intercessors are standing in the gap, crying out to the Lord to beg for mercy for this nation. So he is hearing the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, but because of their sins, because of their sins. Then he says, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to check it out for myself to see if it is true that they are so wicked as they are. The continuing of that version says that Abraham goes between the presence of the Lord and says, Lord, one second, if I may, if I may speak to you, Lord. And the Lord says, go ahead, Abraham. If you find 50, Lord, 50 who are righteous, would you spare them? And the Lord says, yes, I will. Well, he says, can I speak to you again, God? In the same hour, he's interceding, please, if I may, Lord, if you find 45 righteous in this hour, would you spare them? And he goes on, he says, Abraham, I will spare them. He goes on, Lord, can I speak to you again? Same hour of intercession, same hour. He has not left the presence of the Lord. He goes on to say, if you find 35, if you find 30, all the way till he gets to the point, Lord, if you find 10 righteous people in this nation, would you spare it? And the Lord says, yes. I believe that even if the Lord, even if Abraham would have went down to one, the Lord would have spared the nation. This is the power of intercession. Someone stood before the Lord and said, God, if you will find 50 righteous people, would you spare the nation? If you will find 10 righteous people, would you spare the nation? And I believe the Lord say, if I find three, if I find three, I am in the midst and I will spare that nation. And just reading this, I mean, it, look, it brings tears to my eyes because intercession is such a powerful tool that we are so lacking in this hour, somebody's got to stand in the gap for our families, for our children, for our, for, the, for our descendants, for what is yet to come. We have to stand in the gap for our generation. Abraham belonged to that select group of people that we call the intercessors.
Individuals like Moses, Samuel, Elijah, Jeremiah, the apostles, and our Lord himself are intercessors. In fact, right now, the Lord stands in the ministry of intercession. So we are never more ever, we are never more ever like the Lord when we are in intercession. We become just like the Lord when we are in intercession. There is a powerful agreement of covenant moving the kingdom of God when we come into agreement with the heart of the Father to work into intercession, to agree for, for whatever it is the Lord places on your heart. I mean, geez, sometimes we get so caught up in ministry, we forget that our own is dying. We need to stand in intercession for our own family and then the extended family. So that way you don't forget your own people. An intercessor must know the Lord personally and be obedient to his will. He must be close enough to the Lord to learn the secrets and know what to pray about. The Lord's words have singled him out. Mean, I have chosen, I've chosen you my intimate friend. Abraham knew about Sodom's future than the citizens themselves did. Abraham knew about the future of the nation before the citizens of that nation even understood it. Do you understand the power of intercession means that you will know something in advance before the person will know it. That is the power of intercession. There is a mighty going before the person that the Lord places in your heart. You go before them for the circumstances, for the things that they're about to enter into so that you can break off the, the, the yoke of the wicked before the person works in to what they're walking into. You know before the person does what's about to happen. It's the power of intercession. We cannot live without intercession. We cannot even walk in faith without intercession. We have to intercede for the things that we are seeing, the things that we are going through because it's not enough to say, I see it, but what can we do about it? We have so many opportunities that pass us by because we think we don't have the power to change it. It's a lie from hell. Abraham's prayer was based not on the mercy of God, but on the justice of God. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? Deuteronomy 32.4 says that. Should not the judge of the earth do what is right? A just and holy God could not destroy righteous believers with wicked unbelievers. And Lot was a believer, even though his actions seemed to be opposite. Hello? Our family members are believers, even though their actions seem to be opposite of that. So that is enough hope to have to display our faith and intercession for them. That is, and look, they have enough faith to believe that God exists, but their actions are opposite of that faith. Is enough hope for us to intercede in that faith. We can come boldly before the throne for our families who have the, the enough to believe but do not have the faith to go with it, the actions, the works of what, you know, the maturity of Christ. But that's enough for us. That's enough seed to go before the Father and say, I'm bringing my cousin before you. I'm bringing this one before you. I'm bringing that one before you because they deserve the same salvation that we received. We were just as bad as them. How is it that God cannot change them, but he could change us? That same power is in intercession. Then it goes on and says, a just and holy God cannot destroy the righteous believer. Abraham did not want to see all those people die and be lost forever. God does not want anyone to be destroyed. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. 
He wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. I take no pleasure in, in the death of the wicked. I only want them to return from their wicked ways so that they can live. Ezekiel 33, 11. Intercessors must have compassionate hearts and deep concern for the salvation of the lost, no matter what their sins may be. Man, have we not heard people say that those people are so far gone? Man, if it wasn't for the salvation, if it wasn't for God, I would have, I was considered so far gone. And here I am today. So if those people that we've judged that they're so far gone from in sin that they cannot be saved, then we too have entered into the agreement of not the covenant of Jesus Christ, but the covenant of the devil. Because he's the only one that says that people cannot be saved. They're, they're too far gone. And it's just, there's nothing you can do. No, there is something we can do. We can stand in the gap of intercession for them and we can help change this thing around. And God, in the midst of that prayer, will give you a confirmation that this will be his will or what will be the will. But you get to stand. You have an opportunity to help change this thing around. This is why we are here on earth. We fight the good fight of faith. Never underestimate the importance of even a small number of believers, as few as 10, would have saved the whole city from destruction. Your personal witness today is as important to God, no matter how insignificant you may feel. No matter how insignificant you may think your prayer is, no matter how much you think it won't do a thing, I'm going to tell you today that that is a lie that is going against the covenant agreement that we have with Jesus Christ that is going into the agreement of the covenant of the devil and that kingdom that does not believe and that kingdom that does not want things to exist and it's that kingdom that we do not run with. Abraham was interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah where everyone said they were so far gone. Even God said if I could find at least 50 he said, here, here, I'll do something even better, Abraham. If I could find at least 10, I'll spare the nation. And we are in a time right now that God does not want to see anyone perish without accepting the truth. The truth, Jesus Christ. We need to gather, not for another conference, not for another food gathering, not for another comfort me gathering. We need to gather to seriously come together and begin to cry out for our families, cry out for our cities, cry out for your region, cry out then for the nation. There is a movement that needs to happen and there are steps to getting there. First, establish your heart again to be compassionate enough to believe that no one is too far out that cannot be saved. If you are not feeling the heart of the Father in this season for intercession, then I would just begin to ask the Lord to lead you there because it has to be led by the Spirit. We have and I say we, I'm, I should be referring to myself. When I say we, it's because I always include the Holy Spirit in my life as me. I have been led way too many times in the last three weeks to, to just travail over people and spare them from the, from the wrath of death because I don't know what it is. All I know is that that's what is, the Spirit is leading me to. And I feel like God's going to use intercession like ever before to change our nation. And you might think that it's going to be all this other stuff, but it's going to be the power of intercession that's going to change our nation. It's going to be the very thing that's going to pour out its wisdom. It's going to be the very thing that God is going to use to give us direction and guidance. It's going to be that very thing. And I can't remember a revival that has ever started without the power of intercession. And I don't believe we're coming into a revival in this harvest the reason why it's called the harvest is because we're going to be awakened spiritually. Are you being led like Abraham in this hour to cry out and bring people into the covenant with Jesus Christ? Because if that is so you, then find yourself 10 more, find yourself four more, find yourself five and let it grow and begin to have 
a movement of just crying out to God because he said someone was crying in Sodom and Gomorrah. He heard the outcry in Sodom and Gomorrah. There's an outcry happening right now in this nation. I know, I sense it, I feel it. I feel like, I don't know if I was coming into like that old age stuff where you just begin to cry all the time. And I was like, it's, it's a joke guys. But what I'm saying is that it's been happening all too frequently, which reveals that the father's heart is crying out. Who, he says, let's go back. Should I hide my plan from Abraham? That's what he said. Who was he asking? He said, should I hide my plan from Abraham? The Lord asked. For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation. All the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. I've singled him out. I mean, we say we're chosen. How many of us has been singled out because we are chosen? We are singled out people to bless this nation, to bring in our inheritance of our families, to bring in our descendants. Do you understand the Old Testament, the inheritance wasn't the riches, the inheritance was the family. The inheritance was having sons and daughters. That was the inheritance. Have we lost our way to think that our inheritance has to do with prosperity and the goodness? God gives you blessings and he blesses you because, because of the covenant. But our inheritance, our inheritance is the sons and daughters. Our inheritance is our family. Our inheritance is that, is what we inherit. We bring them into a kingdom, a kingdom that they so are longing and dying for. They're, uh, they're crying out in the darkness for the, for the truth, for, for just to find the freedom in truth. What is true? What is true is what they're crying. What is true? Is God even existent? Then why am I here? Because there's not one person who has stepped out and said, I will labor. I will help you. Not will I only bring you to the Lord, but I will disciple you. I was so caught up in a platform mentality, in a stadium mentality that we've forgotten that it only takes one to disciple another. That disciple will disciple another. And that disciple, then they multiply in discipling. It's just become that easy, but it's been so complicated. Because we've forgotten what it was to actually disciple people. And this is our inheritance. And I know that God is bringing intercessors in this hour to gather together for not just, God, would you just do it? No, God is asking us to take authority and be the ones who help change our nation, help change our city, help change our family. We have the key in our hands. Because when Jesus died, he handed it over. He said, look, I've done it already. All you need to do is use your key. And there he is up on the right hand of the father, interceding his ministry of intercession day and night for us. Go, go, go with the cloud of witnesses. Go, 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 go. And they're screaming, go, go, go. But where are we going? Where are we going? We need direction. So I really feel... As we move into this movement of intercession for a Sodom and Gomorrah pleading that God will give us direction, he will give us wisdom, and he's going to bring clarity, and we will see our families walking through that door. You know, the one that we thought would never give their life to Christ is going to walk through that door. And we're going to see the glory of God. Not only because our families are walking in, but because, because when they walk in, we will see the glory on them. It's an amazing hour to stand in the gap and be a part of rebuilding the wall. And I just can't get past it. And I don't know how long God is going to continue to have us in this, but it's an honor. Just like Abraham said, I'm honored to stand before you. And so therefore, may I ask you, do we come to the Father with this nature, humble? Father, it's a pleasure to stand before your presence. And while I'm here, may I ask you what it is you are asking for me to help you with? Sodom and Gomorrah, there's a cry. And God is calling intercessors like Abraham. Read Genesis 18, and you will find something that is for this hour. We want wisdom. 
We need wisdom. We need direction. We need strategy. And we don't need breakthrough. We need to break out. Like I said in the beginning of the video, a breakthrough is me tearing the curtain, but it still remains a curtain torn. We need a breakthrough where it's completely broken, where you cannot even tell it was a curtain anymore. And we have to get to this place because that's what covenant is. It's bringing us into the promises of God. Full inheritance. Full inheritance. Not, not some, not little. No, the Bible says that we have full inheritance. And we need a covenant bride. And so that's what I feel is happening in this hour. And as I continue to press in, I have so many dreams that God has given me. And I'm writing them down. And I'm just asking for prayer on it because I see a lot of things happening in the demonic realm. And it's very active. But I want to see more things happening in the realm of Jesus where that is becoming more active than the realm of the wicked. And that is what I will stand for. If that's all I do in this season is stand in the gap, then that's all I will do. But there's a wall that needs to be rebuilt. And before we can build the wall, we need the strategy of heaven. Because this time, it's not breakthrough. We're breaking out. And it's going to be our final breakout. Whatever held us back, whatever hinders us in that last season, will not do it this season. We are confronting our enemy. And so... Let's just pray. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you are delivering a message. I just thank you, God, that you will pour out your heart on people, on your people, God, to stand in the gap in this hour for wisdom, to cry out for our nation, to cry out for our families, to cry out, Father, that we will be the ones to begin to fill that bowl of intercession in heaven. Father, if that's all we do in this hour, then let it be that that's all we do. Take away the, 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 just the, the, the thing in our mind, that Gentile mindset, God. God, and give us a mind of Christ. Take away everything that is connected to the mind of a Gentile and give us the mind of Christ that we will stand in the gap, God, and that we will call forth things as so it is, even though it is not. And we will continue to plow and call forth by faith those things that need to be made manifest in this hour, God, and that you would give us the tools that we need to begin to steward in this harvest. That, Father, that the the things that you have called us for, the grace that you have bestowed in our life to stand before your, your, your mighty work, God, the mighty work that you have given us, Lord, that we would, that we would so be stabled in it with substance that will maintain and that whatever you give us, God, will be so profound in its nature of heavenly touching anointing that the yokes of society, the yokes of people we encounter will be broken because of the anointing that you will give us to equip us for a time as this. I really feel like like it's like an Esther, you know, like when Esther came in before the king, she had to prepare herself. She had to soak herself. She had to, she had to pray to the father. She had to fast. She had to ask. She had to, she had to seek. And then before she can go before the king to petition that that is where we are to be. Just be like Esther, soak it up. Let the Lord just lead you into the word and pray and give you strategy for what we are we're called we have a grace we have a grace and we have to walk out our grace so that we can fulfill the father's plans his business we can't do that if you do not know what you're doing we can't just keep going into prayer meetings without knowing what we're doing what are we targeting what what are we going after we are going into these prayer meetings with nothing to go after. We are going in like, like blind. And if that's the type of prayer means you're going to keep having, you're not going to get anything from it because you're not targeting anything. We're just going in and we're just shouting and screaming and nothing's happening. Nothing's moving because there's nothing specifically being asked. And that is what Esther did. She went before the king and she specifically had a request. She didn't have all these 50 requests. She had one request, one request, one request. 
And if that's all we need right now to begin the, this, just to begin to, to bring light, to, to increase our light, to refill the, the jars of oil, then let that be just it. But I really am praying that we break off this mindset of having to be seen by the world so you can be recognized. That whole man, you know, pleasing spirit's got to go so that you can be so effective in Christ that you would know that the only one you serve is Jesus Christ himself and whatever he asks, you will do. Not because he's asking, it's because you love him, you're obedient. So we need to target. We need to target what we're doing in our prayer meetings. And so that is what we're praying for and ask God to give you the targets so we can become effective in our strategies and what we're planning and what we're building and it's not even our plans. It's God's plan. So how can we have a plan laid out if the one who's, who, whose vision it is hasn't even given us the vision yet? So we have to be ready to receive the blueprints of heaven. But we need a target. If it's just that one thing, and if it takes you three weeks of that one thing of prayer, then let it be. Because God is going to reveal it. He just needs someone who is willing to run with it so i leave you with that and until the lord leads me again i'll be back on i bless you guys in jesus name have a good weekend